Only God can judge me. That right? Only God, man. Nobody else. Nobody else. All you other motherfuckers, get out of my business. What's going on, KTF family? You already know what it is. And if you don't, it's see your boy, Preston, aka Press, aka P. You already know you gotta break it down and hold it. Hold it. Back with another reaction video. And today, reacting to top 10 raw moments from this week. So, without further ado, let's get to this raw shit, bro. Let's see what they're talking about. It's the night after a pay per view. And usually you issue an open challenge. And I accept. Hey, sh hey, shout out to Dana Brooks for stepping up, bro. Level up for that. Now we can proceed. Bold move, Dana. It's not all kind of oh, 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 he doesn't care. She, she hit him with that 300 kick. Hold on, bro. Like Dana's been back. And I accept. Bold move, Dana. I don't know what kind of... Oh, Ronda Rousey <laughs> doesn't care. Seems like Dana's been drinking that Becky Lynch Kool-Aid. Oh, Ronda right. Rousey uh, could give a damn as she attacks Dana Brooke here no. tonight. Now outside the ring, and this vicious oh, assault by Rousey's underway. Rousey is just ragdolling Dana Brooke. I can assure you Dana already regrets the decision to try to play hero for the locker die. room. Well, a passionate and emotional oh, oh, damn. Damn. Dana Brooke oh. now dropped on the back of her neck, and Ronda Rousey's assault continues. Ronda Rousey. Hey, stick to that then I'll show you an arm ball. You know what? No. Oh, oh my God. God. Hold on, on bro. Hold on, bro. Bro, and hit Ronda with a finish him. Finish him. Damn, I gotta bring that back. I gotta bring that back. Hey, stick to that one. Then I'll show you an arm ball. You know what? No. Yeah. Oh, oh my god! god. 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 is going nuts! Oh! Pass by Black! Fade to Black, ladies and gentlemen! Send me a present and try and. Win me over, huh? Just what I think, put a present in your stupid car! Give me something I can't even fit in! It's too far! <laughs> Look at this! Didn't even wash it! There's crap on the window! Bro, if, if Braun Strowman was doing this to your car, like, what would you do, bro? What would you do if he did this to your shit? That's crazy. I mean, what's under the hood of this thing? <laughs> Bro, this shit hurting me, and it's not even my car. Damn! Look at Tamina. Getting involved in the splash oh, wait a minute, and that Phoenix. Wasting hey. no time. Goes for one after Nia Jackson. Look at Beth go. Right. Taking none. Play neutralizer. Hell yes. Beth Phoenix, who was once known as the most powerful woman in. Hey, she should have hit um, she should have hit uh, Tamina with that spear in reference to Edge, bro. It's hey, it's good to see Beth Phoenix back though. You know what I'm saying? It's good to see that shit, man. WWE <gasps> has not lost a step. And that is Vintage Angle! The Fatality. Angle Slam! Kurt Angle into the cover! Victorious in his hometown! Now, they said that Kurt Angle is having his, um, his farewell match at WrestleMania. So I guess for right now, we on the farewell Kurt Angle tour, bro. Which, I mean, it's about that time. You know what I'm saying? It's about that time. And I know everybody, they've been talking about... John Cena versus Samoa Joe at WrestleMania, but um, I just don't see that. For some reason, I just I just can't see that happening, especially now that Samoa Joe is United States Champion and John Cena having a match at WrestleMania against Samoa Joe for the United States Championship. We all know John Cena ain't gonna win, so the match itself is pre is too predictable. I think it should be John Cena versus Kurt Angle at WrestleMania. 
and Kurt Angle's last match, just because Kurt Angle was John Cena's first match in 2002 on SmackDown. It's one of those situations where it literally writes itself. It's great booking. You won't even have to really promote it. It promotes itself. I hope, like, I, I hope they do that. You know what I'm saying? It can be a slow-paced match. It can be a lot of good spots in it. You know what I'm saying? It's a good moment, you know? Hopefully they do it, man. Book it, Vince. Book it. Wait. Oh, my God! I thought Baron Corbin and oh Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre ambushing a soul team. Roman Reigns, the Scottish psychopath. Reigns never saw it coming. Get the look on his face. A crazed look in the eyes of McIntyre. Let's go, Roman. Oh, my God. Not again. Roman Reigns' face went right off the ring post off the claymore so ba basically we all know where this is headed roman reigns versus drew mcintyre at wrestlemania which i'm not mad at it should be a good match bro what oh, who the what are you doing is that it's leo what the hell is rush doing well, he's distracted finn balor but and Lashley trying to take advantage of oh, oh. And Leo Ruskin pays for it. And Balor launches himself. Oh, a spear! A spear out of midair! The cover! Lashley wins the championship! Bro, WWE? WWE did Finn Balor dirty, bro. Y'all remember in the last vid, I said... The only reason Baron Corbin, Drew McIntyre, and Bobby Lashley got together was so they could have a match against uh, the Shield. So literally, they took the Intercontinental Championship off Bobby Lashley and put it on Finn Balor because there was no reason for Bobby Lashley to be Intercontinental Champion while feuding with the Shield. There was no re especially if... Uh, Bobby Lashley, Baron Corbin, and Drew McIntyre was going to lose the match, which was smart booking. You don't want the Intercontinental Championship losing. You don't want the Intercontinental Champion losing in the main event of a pay-per-view. So that's smart booking. But it literally shows you that they literally just used Finn Balor. But they did give him an opportunity, though. And when Finn Balor was um, Intercontinental Champion, he didn't do nothing with the title. He didn't cut no great promos. He had good matches, but he didn't cut no great promos. He wasn't funny. He wasn't charismatic. He didn't take advantage of the opportunity. And it passed him by. I mean, shit, man. I want to like Finn Balor. I really do, man. I want to support the guy, but it's just something about him that doesn't say world champion. Like he need John Cena to mentor him or he need Paul Heyman to, to mentor him or something because the entertainment factor of it is just not there for him. When he be cutting promos, he just be sitting, he just stand there and smile. Like he need to get more aggressive. He need to actually believe in what the fuck he is saying and make us believe that shit. Come on, man. Here is your winner, and the new Intercontinental Champion. But I knew Bobby Lashley was going to be an uh, Intercontinental Champion again just because Vince McMahon really likes Bobby Lashley. He really likes Bobby Lashley, man. So. Bobby Lashley! I want you at WrestleMania. Give it to me. You want me at Mania? Is that That's what this right. is about? You're beating up a 70-year-old man. You are hiding behind securities. This is what you've become because you want me at WrestleMania? Is that what you want? Give it to me. Give it to me. Give me what I want. But stuff, man. Give it, give it to me. Give it to me. What? You want me at WrestleMania? Give me what I want. You're on. Bring everything you have. Because there will be no rules, no restrictions to what I do, no law. There will be no holds barred. 
Rollins, there's the stop. Rollins into the cover. Hook of the leg on Benjamin. Seth Rollins with the victory. Here is your winner, Seth Rollins. Ambrose asked for this. Oh, oh my God. God. Are you kidding me? Bro, I'm going to say this. For one, I'm, I'm surprised that the farewell speech from The Shield didn't make the, the top 10. But there's something I just can't believe that Dean Ambrose is leaving WWE. Like, it's just something that just doesn't sit well with me. I feel like it's a work. You know, I could be wrong, but I just have a gut feeling that all this shit is a work, bro. Like, you telling me Dean Ambrose is a former tag team champion. Intercontinental, United States, WWE Champion, main event at pay-per-views, has his own movie. It's part of The Shield, the biggest faction in WWE today. And your girl is a head commentator on Raw. You get to see your lady every day. Damn! And you leaving all that behind? You telling me you leaving your lady around Corey Graves if you leave WWE? Corey Graves out here, bro. I don't know about all that. But it's just something I just can't believe that Dean Ambrose is actually gonna leave, man. I just, I just, I don't believe that shit, man. I hope not. That'd be a huge loss. Huge loss. Ambrose is caught in the in that railing. Ambrose is trapped. He's trapped in the railing. Three more kick off the side of the face of Dean Ambrose. And I, and I, and I could be wrong. But uh, let me know in the comments, man. Like, like really lo let me know what y'all think about this in the comments because I want to know how y'all feel. I feel like ever since Dean Ambrose had that Stone Cold podcast, that shit fucked him over. When everybody said Dean Ambrose was acting like he didn't want to be there, how awkward it was, how he was kind of being lazy with the interview. But the thing about it was, you know, Stone Cold was asking him questions about his childhood. And any real Dean Ambrose fan knows that, you know, Dean Ambrose's childhood wasn't all roses and rainbows. You know what I'm saying? But Stone Cold kept pressing the issue, bro, and it just made the, the whole interview awkward. It made Dean Ambrose uncomfortable. You could tell, you know? But it's like ever since that podcast, Dean Ambrose being fucked over, man. This man was Intercontinental Champion and had an Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania on the pre-show. It's like, man, my man's been on thin ice for a minute, man. I don't know. I could be wrong. Let me know what y'all think, bro. Knocking Ambrose off the stage. Handrail and all. McIntyre into the cover. Three, and mercilessly, this is over. Flawless victory. Here's your winner. Drew McIntyre. Where well, you have it, folks? On a scale from one to ten, I give Raw probably a strong seven. Raw was a good show, man, with the Shield having a little farewell speech, the dominance of um, Drew McIntyre, um, Kurt Angle, Beth Phoenix. Raw was pretty decent, man. Raw was pretty. pretty de Raw, Raw was pretty decent. Raw was pretty decent, bro. I'll give it a strong seven, man. But uh, hopefully they make uh, Kurt Angle versus John Cena, Kurt Angle's last match at WrestleMania. Um, I'm praying for that, man. It'll be a good ending to Kurt Angle's story, bro. So let me know what you think about this video in the comments down below. If you're new here, welcome to Pack Knops. You already know what it is, bro. It's your boy, Preston. As always, let me keep the faith until next time. Peace. Against all odds, open my true motherfuckers know. This be the realest shit I ever wrote. Against all odds, up in the studio, getting blowed.